All right, in this lesson here, what we're going to do is continue on from the last lesson, which was the first of the control statements lesson, where we took a look at branching. This lesson here continues with control statements, where we'll be looking at how we can do looping. We're going to take a look at things such as do loops, whiles, for loops. We're also going to look at how we can break and continue while dealing with loops as well. So with that, let's go ahead and hand it over to Mr. Joel. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the almighty while wow loop, the which wow is very loop. cool. So let's go ahead and put well, some actually, stuff you know in what? here. Before you even put some code down, let's talk about loops. What's All the right. significance of a loop? Well, basically, what if you want to do pretty much the same task over and over again with maybe, say, different values to work with? Okay. So what we can do is say, I want to run this command 30 times. And okay. it, with our loop, we can run the same commands or group of commands over and over again. And that beats having to, let's say, copy and paste those commands 30 times. Right. Or even, here's one better for you. What if you have to repeat a series of commands or a group of commands an unspecified number of times when you design the application? It depends on perhaps some input that we get from the user. Right. So then you wouldn't know how many times that you need to put the command or group of commands Exactly. Down. So looping can be very powerful and save you a lot of typing. That's for sure. Okay. So let's go in here and let's start out with the while loop. We can, let's just create another variable. Let's say x, an integer x, it's equal to zero. Okay. You know the drill. Absolutely. So let's create a loop and of course we have our identifier while here and we're going to have the loop with the parentheses and same as as, as in a if statement okay. we're going to have an expression that if evaluated to true it will go inside our loop and continue like our something loop. like while x is less than right well x is let's say less than 5 okay okay so actually let's go in here and put a more a larger value in here let's say 10 and let's actually change this i'm sorry let's say if <laughs> x is um, greater than zero. Okay, so while x is greater than zero, loop through what's going to be put inside of this actual bracket. You set up to do a countdown. Yes, I am. Okay, just wondering. So what the other we way would have been a count up. <laughs> okay, keep Very going. Very funny. We so were just to let everybody know we don't really put anything together before we do these. That's why Joel's running in one direction and I'm running in another in regards to the example we want to show. But since I'm just the student. I'll let the instructor You're do really the talking. You're really bad student. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So what we can do is say x minus minus, which as you remember is x equals x minus 1. That's right. So what's going to happen here is we're going to go into our loop and then go here and it's going to say, is x greater than 0? Well, yes, it's 10. So we're going to go inside of our loop, decrement x, so it's going to be 9. Then we're going to go to the ending brace here, go back to the top here where we check for the... Um, expression here again. Check, so check if it's true or false. Check if it's true or false. And if it's true, which it is, 9 is greater than 0, we loop through it again and again and again until finally we get to the top where x is no longer greater than 0. x is 0. Right. At that point, this evaluates to false and it'll go outside of the loop to the line, basically the line after the ending curly brace. That's right. So if we had say, C out, end of loop right here. Let's put a end line right there. And as a quick reminder for those of you guys that just saw the last lesson where we talked about if statements, when you only have one statement that's going to be executed like this, again, you don't need to have your you do not need to have them. blocking symbols in there. However, I'm going to need it because right here I'm going to put a C out and I'm going to say, uh, well, I'm just going to print out X. So it's going to be a countdown. Yeah, just a number. That's cool. So Now watch this. Let's debug this. But first, let's start out by making that a 3. Okay. A few too many loops is a bad thing. So let's press F9, set a breakpoint, press F5. Yes, we want to build. If we go in here, our X is some random crazy value. Press F10 to go to the next line. Now X is equal to 3. Now we've got to our while loop here, and our expression is going to check whether this is true or false. Okay. And X is greater than 0, so what's, what's going to happen? You'll notice the arrow here is pointed at line 9. We go in. And it is true, so it's going to go inside of our loop here. And at this point, you'll notice x is still 3 down x below. x is still 3. And we're going to print out x with an end of line. So we go to that, and you'll notice that it did print out 3. Good. x minus minus, we run that, and now x is 1 less than it used to be, so it's 2. Now, right now, we're at this ending curly brace right here. If we press F10 again, 
we go back up to the beginning of the while loop where it's going to check to see if x is greater than 0. Right, and in this case, is 2 greater than 0? Yes, yes. If you say yes, that's like you're asking yourself, should I do the loop? And if you answer yes to your little test right here, then yeah, do the loop. Right. So, Joel, is 2 greater than 0? Yes, it is. You just said yes, do the loop. Yes, There's an exactly. interesting way for beginners to look at it. Right. So we have the C out X. So now let's print that out. And, of course, we have it here. Go through. We decrement it. Go back See up to the, the bottom, beginning. it's been shifted to now a value of 1. Now it's been shifted to 1. Now if we press it again, 1 is still greater than 0. So it goes inside the loop, prints out the 1, decrements it. Now it's equal to 0. If we go back to the top right now, you'll notice that it's going to check it. But 0 is not greater than 0. Right. So it's going to go to the outside of the and loop, the next line outside Watch of the loop. the yellow arrow. Watch the yellow arrow. Press F10, and now we jump to the next line. Nice. So now we're going to print C out, end of loop. If we look over here in our console, it says 3, 2, 1, end of loop. Aha. Very cool. So we can stop debugging, and that's really the basic look at a while loop. Okay. Now another thing that's kind of interesting, let's go ahead, since right here, what's X going to be, Buzz? What's X going to be right there? I would probably say zero. Yes. So let's say X. Did I guess right? Did I guess right? Yes, you guessed right. Sweet. You're such a wonderful student. Yeah, excellent. So X equals three. Let's reinitialize it to three. And we're going to do another kind of loop, a okay. do while loop, basically. So we'll call this do. Hey, you know what? Just to show students how we can go in there and quickly comment stuff out, use your multi line comments to comment the first. Uh, Mine as well. So let's go in here and. Loop out. Forward slash and the asterisk, asterisk, forward slash, and that comments, comments out that whole section. Sweet. So we can actually get rid of this x equals 3. That's right. So we can go into here, and we have a do here. Now, this is very, very similar to a while loop, but instead of having the check being done at the very beginning, we're going to do the check at the end. So first we have our identifier, do, and then it that means it goes directly into our loop. That's right. No, no matter what. When it gets to our loop here, it's going to run the commands that are inside of our our bracket, inside of our area here, directly. And the significance and the significance of this is coming into the while loop. There is a possibility that we may never execute what's inside this loop. Exactly, even because once. if x is equal to zero at first, it's going to go into the while loop and say, "Wait, zero is greater than zero. That's right. So it's going to skip the whole loop totally entirely. Skip it. With our do, it's going to always run at least once. Right. And again, these are things that you'll get into in the future. You start really getting into logic. You're going to find yourself in situations where you may say, you know, I need to run this loop if a certain conditions happen and if a value comes in, start doing it. Right. But there's a possibility I may not. Or you may be in a situation where you say to yourself, I have to at least run this once for whatever reason. Exactly. There you go. Okay. So <laughs> let's go ahead and, well, now what we need to do is after our after our do in the braces, now we have to actually say our our condition. Right. So we can say while, put this in parentheses, and do exactly the same thing. X is greater than zero. And now we need a semicolon. So remember, we do need a semicolon after this. So inside of our do loop, let's do exactly the same thing as we did before. We can say X and L, X minus minus, semicolon. Okay. So let's go into here just so you can see what's going on. So let's put a breakpoint there. Actually, let's just leave the breakpoint up there. Go into it from the top. So run that. Now if we press F10, initializes it to 3, goes down to our do loop, and now you'll notice we're already directly inside of our do loop. It did not check. That's right. We have to. Right. So if you look down here, we've already printed out 3. Cool. So we decrement, checks, goes back to the top, prints out 2, decrements, now it's 1, 1 is greater than 0, goes back to the top, prints out 1, decrements it, 0 is not greater than 0, exits out. So we get the exact same output. Right. However, what if we were to, for example, let's go in here, and let's say this is 0. Right. Okay? And let's uncomment this just for now. And let's see what happens if we do this. Let's run this. Yes, we want to build. Okay. So now we initialize our x to 0. And with our while loop, it's going to check the condition first. So when we run this, it directly skips our loop. Right. But however, if we get to the do while loop, it's not going to skip it at all. It directly goes into the loop. Absolutely. So it's going to print out 0, decrement it. It's going to be negative, zero, negative 1 down here. And negative 1 is not greater than 0 last time I checked. Right. So it's going to exit out of the loop and print end of loop. And you'll notice we do get a 0 end of loop. You got it. So very cool. 
And finally, I guess there would be the coolest loop of them all. The yeah, for loop. The for loop. That's always the coolest. Absolutely. So we can go in here. Let's delete all of this out just to make things a little bit more clean. Just a little cleaner. Yeah. And let's go in here and type for. Now there's three parts of a for loop, basically. We have the initialization, the mm -hmm. condition, and the increase or some kind of command that we can run that's going to have some sort of change the to our loop. Increment or decrement. Increment or decrement or something like that. Right. So what we're going to do, the first one is going to be the initialization. So inside of here, we can actually declare an integer. We can say int i equals 0. So inside of our initialization, we've declared an integer i and set that equal to 0. Okay. And we can put uh, all of these, these three parts are s divided are by, by semicolons. You got it. So we can say i, this is our condition, is less than, say, 5. Then we can end that with a semicolon. And the last part is going to be the increase, decrease, or whatever. And this is going to say i++. plus plus. So let's end this section off with our curly braces. And what this is going to do is it's going to say, very first thing, when we get into our loop, it's going to initialize, excuse me, initialize i to 0. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be run one and only one time mm -hmm. at the very beginning. Then it's going to say, is i less than 5? Kay. If it is, it's going to go into the loop and perform some function. So we can say c out i, so end l. Okay. Now it's going to, after it prints this statement, it's going to go back to the top, as in our while loop, and it's going to check again, is i less than 5? Actually, it's going to, um, excuse me, it's going to run this i++. After it runs i++, it's going to check again, is i less than 5? Well, after it's plused it, incremented it, it's going to be 1 now. Right. So 1 is less than 5. It's going to go through it again and again and again until i is no longer right, once, is equal once to 5. That's right. Once i becomes 5, 5 is not less than 5, then we're going to simply exit out of the, exit loop. Out of the loop. So let's kind of see how this works. Let's go ahead and put down another breakpoint. Press F5. Yes, we want to build. And let's go in here. And you'll notice that i is currently a random value. It's going to run that. And right now, we've already checked once to make sure i is less than 5. Okay. And we're going to print out 0. We're going to go through. You'll Just to make sure you see this, we did print out a 0 in our console. And if we go back, it's going to go back to the top. And it's going to increment it first and then check it. So it incremented and checked just then. And i is still less than 5. So we print, go back to the top. And i is now 2 i is now 3, i is now 4, and it's going to go through it one more time. i is now 5 when we do this. Right. So if we run this, you'll notice we exit out of the loop. Right. We don't do the inside of it. Right. So you'll notice we print out 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, yep. not 5. That's right. So we exit that out, and you'll notice it says end of loop, all is good. Another thing you may want to know is that we can have this to be, say, a Decrement. That's right. And we can go in here and say i initially equals, say, 5. And we want to say loop until i is greater than 0, while i is greater than 0. Right. So if we run this, yes, we want to do that. It's going to initialize i to 5. If you look down here, i is 5. i is greater than 0. Print that out. So we print out a 5. Then we go through, print out a 4, print out a 3, print out a 2, print out a 1. Now, if it decrement, decrements this, it's going to be less than 0, so we exit out of the loop. And you'll notice we say 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then end of loop. Very, very nice. Also, just as an extra thing here, we can go in here and add a comma and have other sorts of statements that we can put in here. So we could say, let's say we had an int x, okay? We can go in here and say x plus plus. Mm -hmm. So let's say x, we'll initialize it to 0 at first. Okay. And we'll say that every time this is decremented, we're going to also increment x. So if we say c out x as well, you'll notice what we get here. Actually, just to make this a little bit more clear, we can say i equals, and then we'll output that. We can say x equals, and then we'll output x. So let's go into here, run this. Yes, we want to build. And we get down to here. So we're going to initialize 5. You'll notice i is equal to 5, x is equal to 0. So it's going to print 5 and 0. It's going to go back to the top, decrement i, and check i if i is greater than 0. So look down here, 5 and 0. Press it. Now it's 4 and 1. And let's not forget that x also got incremented as well. Exactly. Okay. So if we 
I'll put these out. You'll notice that we get five zero four one. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to loop, loop, continuing to look down here is to see how they're kind of going to cross each other. Actually, they already did cross each other. <laughs> and then I, it's going to print this one more time. So we have five zero four one three two, and then two three. Okay. And then if we print this one more time, now if we decrement i, you'll notice that i is 1. If we decrement it, it's going to be not greater than 0. So it's going to exit out of the loop and say end of loop. And you'll notice we get this really cool pattern going on. Mm -hmm. So actually with that, you know, that basically wraps up basic loops. True. Though we could go ahead and throw one more thing in there, and that is oh, breaking break and continue. And continue. Yes, yeah. very important. So let's say instead of... Let's say there's some special condition that we may want to exit out of. Let's say if we change this to 6, and let's just kind of say yes, we want to do that. And you'll notice that at some point here, I, 6, 0, 5, 1, 4, 2, and 3, 3. You'll notice that I and X at this point are going to be equal to each other, right? right? So what if we wanted to set up a condition to say exit out of the loop if I and X are equal to each other? Sounds good. So let's me. press any key. And let's go into here and say, if x equals equals i, as we did before with mm -hmm. our if statements, we can just say, break. Okay. So in other words, it's going to say, okay, if they're equal to each other, break out of the loop. So it's going to, right when it hits the statement, exit completely out of the loop. Right. So let's kind of walk through this just so you can see how this works. So we initialize our x. We go into here. And we print out the first two, so we have 6 for our i, 0 for our x. Go through this, 5, 1, 4, 2. Now it's 3 and 3. So when we print, after we print these two out, we check to see if x is equal to i. And then we're going to step down into the true portion of the if statement. Right. And then we break out, and it directly skips down here, so we don't actually finish the entire loop. So if we look at our console, we stopped at 3, 3. We stopped at 3, 3. There you go. So very cool stuff. Also, there's a continue, which might be very, very important to you. Let's say we have um, right here, let's want to, what if we wanted to just cut everything that's outside of here? Say we had a C out statement here that says, um, this is an annoying message, or something <laughs> like that. So we can print that out. And let's just get rid of this to, okay. for convenience sake. Let's say, well, maybe if x does not equal i, so when they're not equal to each other, we want to continue. So what that's going to do is when x does not equal i, which is most of the time right. except for one time, it's going to continue. Right when they equal each other, it's going to print, this is an annoying message. Right. So, so basically the continue is just going to immediately skip. jump. Yeah, it's going to skip everything else inside the loop and jump right back up and start another iteration of exactly. it. If it needs to. Right. Okay. So let's press F5, and yes, we want to build. And let's go in here and test this out one more time. So I and X are not equal to each other, so it's going to go to the continue statement here, jump back to the for loop, completely disregarding this right here. Very nice. So we can just loop through here really fast, and now 3 and 3 are equal to each other, so it skips the if statement, mm -hmm. if it, it equals to false. So now we get to our C out, and it prints out this is an, an annoying message. And you can see, this is an annoying message. Just one time. Just one time. So we go all the way through this, exit out, and you'll and notice we're done. that if we go back to the console, we've only got one of those messages in there. Exactly. Very cool. So I guess with that, that actually does wrap up. Yeah, the that's going to bring the lesson to an end. Thanks a lot, everyone.